Hello guys and girls, and welcome to today's edition of Binding of Isaac Bootcamp. Today we are going to be looking at a selection of bosses called the Horsemen, a group comprised of the four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, Famine, Pestilence, War and Death, as well as an additional Horseman who was added in the Halloween update, the Headless Horseman. These bosses won't be appearing in your playthroughs from the outset of the game, and you will have to fight your way through to, and defeat, the first major boss of the game, Mom, before they start showing up. Having the Book of Revelations as your active spacebar item when you enter a floor, and using it once before you fight the boss of said floor, will ensure that you will be in fact facing a horseman. However, this does not apply on the floor that you picked up the Book of Revelations. All of the Horsemen of the Apocalypse, once defeated, will drop a cube of meat as your reward, an item which will take on different forms depending on the number you collect. Your first giving you a simple defensive cube of meat, rotating around your character, the second will give that cube of meat a face and allow it to spit tears when your character does. The third will finally give the disembodied head a body, giving it the ability to roam around rooms, generally chasing the nearest monster and inflicting damage upon contact. The fourth will increase the size of the little meat boy, as well as his damage potential. Any cubes of meat that you collect beyond this will have no effect. The headless horseman will also drop a cube of meat upon death, but unlike his apocalyptic brethren, he also has a chance to drop the pony item. Famine is the first up of the Horsemen of the Apocalypse, a boss relegated to the opening two floors, basement one and two. As with all horsemen, he's a rather unattractive fellow, in serious need of a dental hygienist, mounted atop some sort of zombie stick horse. Famine has a small catalogue of abilities hidden beneath his stumpy fleshy sleeves, the first being a penchant for charging either to his left or his right, depending on the player's position relative to him flying off of one side of the screen and returning via the other, which will, will inflict damage upon your character if he manages to charge into you. The second of his assortment of abilities is that he will occasionally spawn a pooter, a small fly with the ability to spit tears at your character, and it should be noted that his charge ability will kill these little guys if he manages to run into one of them. The third ability of his only makes a showing when he has been whittled down to approximately one third of his total health. Both his body and his zombie stick horse will disappear in a brief but bloody shower, and he will begin launching triple shots at you over and over again, and this is the only ability he does possess in this form. Generally with Famine, you want to be mopping up the pooters as soon as they spawn, as they can complicate things rather quickly if you have a lot firing at you at the same time, as it makes getting out of the way of his charge ability a royal pain in the arse. You can also tempt Famine into using his charge, by standing on either side of him briefly and use that charge to mop up a few of the pooters for you. However, this can be risky as his charge is pretty damn fast and if you're not on the ball you're going to end up taking a hit. Other than this, the fight is relatively simple and getting him down to his second form should not be all that pressing. And once he has lost his body, you just want to stay on the move to keep out of the path of his triple shots and keep firing so that last third of his HP bar will quickly deplete. Climbing up a notch on the food chain takes us to Pestilence, the second horseman of the apocalypse, who will be making his appearances in the boss rooms of Caves 1 and 2. As his name would suggest, he is probably the sickliest looking of the horseman bosses, a fat little creature riding atop another stick horse. Pestilence possesses an immunity to any kind of poison damage that you might inflict via the bean, bad gas, Bob's rotten head or the virus so I advise leaving these items at home before you step into his boss room. As with Famine, this fellow has two phases, the first in which he fights with a selection of three abilities. His first ability is near identical to the Seven Sin mini boss Sloth, during which he tosses a green ball up into the air, which will explode upon contact with the ground after travelling in a short flight arc, inflicting one whole heart's worth of damage upon you if you manage to get hit by it. It will leave a small toxic puddle on the ground, which will also hurt you if you walk into it. His second ability incorporates the toxic puddle from the previous attack, but it will constantly appear underneath Pestilence for the duration of the fight. So if he is constantly moving around, then you're not going to be left with many places to stand. However, the ooze does dissipate after a short while. He has two companions he can summon to aid him during the fight, Chargers and Spitties, a generally dangerous combination, as both have the ability to limit your ability to move, whether that be through shooting tears or charging directly at you. 
Once Pestilence has taken sufficient damage, he will enter his second form, in which his head explodes and he is left as a decapitated body, floating astride his stick horse. In this form, he will still leave a trail of toxic ooze on the ground, and will be firing those green toxic bombs up into the air in random directions and at a much increased rate, so you're going to have to be light on your feet if you want to avoid them all. He will also lose his ability to summon charges and spitties, and will instead be summoning both red and black flies into the fray, which I think is a pretty good trade, as they're considerably easier to deal with and pose far less risk to your character. You definitely want to stay on the move during this boss fight, as the majority of the damage you're going to take from him will be from that toxic ball attack. So keep your eyes peeled, as it is very easy to be a little overzealous in your dodging and stray into the path of either a summoned monster or one of his toxic pools. This brings us on to the Horseman War, a distinct character due to his bright red skin, and the only flaw you'll be running across this guy will be the Depths 1, as the Depths 2 is reserved solely for Mom. War's primary attack harks back to one of Famine's. He charges off either to his left or right, leaving the screen one side only to return from the other. However, unlike Famine, just one charge isn't enough for this horseman, and he will make three full passes before coming to a halt once more. During these charges, he will also emerge from the edge of the screen at different heights, so make sure you're ready to move as this may be pretty damn close to where you're standing. There is a sort of trick to knowing where he will emerge from however, as it will always be around half the room height below where he left, and if this distance would put him below the bottom edge of the screen, he will once again emerge from the top. Whilst he remains mounted on his stick horse, he also has the ability to shoot 8 tears out in all directions, so be ready to dodge between them when necessary. The last of his first form abilities is that he will occasionally hop off of his horse, fly up into the air and spawn a number of troll bombs on the ground, waiting for them to explode before returning to the fray. Be sure to watch the order these bombs spawn in, as the ones exploding earlier can knock subsequent bombs in your direction. After taking the required damage, War's horse will explode and he will begin chasing after your character on foot with an incredible amount of speed. If you've picked up a few speed ups in your travels, then it shouldn't be much of a problem to outrun this guy, and even with less speed you can kite him around obstacles to avoid being hit. However, if you move at a snail's pace and have no obstacles to hide behind, you are definitely going to have a struggle on your hands. However, don't worry too much, because he does occasionally get out of breath and is forced to stop for a moment, which gives you ample opportunity to pelt him with your tears. As you continue to erode War's HP bar in his second form, he gradually slows down as well, making the fight a little easier for those of you who haven't been lucky enough to come across any speed increases. One thing to be careful of with War is inflicting poison damage upon him though, as if War takes any damage when he jumps off the screen to drop bombs on you, he will glitch out and never return to the fight, which is basically going to put a halt to any hopes you had of continuing your playthrough. The leader of the four horsemen is Death, a boss which you will only be encountering in the Womb 1, as once again the level after this is reserved for a single major boss fight. He is an odd looking guy with a skeletal face, riding astride an equally skeletal stick horse. I'm sure you've already realised that a pattern is emerging when I say that this guy has two phases to his fight. In his first form, Death has a number of abilities which I have less than fond memories of as they completely and utterly destroyed me when I first came across this guy, and I would definitely consider him to be one of the most challenging of this group. His first is the ability to summon four scythes at each side of the room, which will fling themselves towards the player, disappearing off screen once they have made their pass. He can also summon a pair of scythes rather than the full four and these two are a little more dangerous in that they lock onto the player and will hunt you relentlessly. With both varieties of scythes, the best policy is simply to shoot them down, as they don't have a massive amount of HP and it's generally easier than dodging the full barrage. Occasionally, an hourglass symbol will appear on the screen and your character will become slightly greyed out, indicating that death has used the hourglass item on you, slowing both your movement speed and tears for a few short seconds. However, I would say that the effect from this isn't all that noticeable. After reaching 50% of his total health, Death will hop off of his horse, which will imitate war as it constantly charges across the screen, 
and ceasing in its travels until you destroy the damn thing. Death will use this opportunity to begin summoning Noits, an extremely frustrating companion as they can only be destroyed by attacks from behind. I wouldn't advise using either the Death Tarot card or the Necronomicon on this boss as you'll basically be throwing charges down the drain as Death will take damage from neither of these. The charging of Death's horse will be instantly kill any Noits on the playing field that he has summoned himself. So during the second phase, I would advise trying to lure them into the path of an oncoming horse, as it is considerably easier than constantly having to get behind the guys. However, if you do have some sort of piercing attack, this will be no problem whatsoever, as you can just kill the guys from the front. Now we come to the odd one out of the group, the Headless Horseman. Added during the Halloween update, there is a possibility for him to appear instead of any of the other Harbingers of the Apocalypse, so you may end up seeing him multiple times in a single playthrough. He has a selection of abilities stolen from each of the four horsemen, his head being able to charge across the screen several times, much like war. He can fire toxic bombs at you, which leave puddles of damaging ooze, like pestilence. His head can shoot triple shots at you, taken from Famine's second form, and he is two separate entities that both need to be killed to proceed, much like Death and his horse, but in this case, his body and his head. So you should deal with all of these in the same way I have explained for the previous horseman. Depending on the order you kill the two, the drop rates on his two final rewards seem to vary, killing his body first causing the pony to drop, and killing his head first resulting in a cube of meat drop. There is also a chance to encounter multiple headless horseman heads in a single room as you make your way through Shale. And if you happen to be holding the Book of Revelations as your active spacebar item, he may also appear as your final boss, instead of the normal Satan fight. And that's it for today's Binding of Isaac bootcamp on The Horseman. I hope I've taught you some useful tips and tricks for dealing with these guys, and maybe even helped you to up your game. See you guys soon.